So 1880 Anna. Okay. So this is an 1880 Anna. And now, chat before you leave, you're like, but Fl Flux, you're the main tank guy. How do you know about support? It's 1880. I could I could teach you support up until maybe like 3750, and then I'd start to get a little hazy. And then like around 4K, I'd kind of be like, oh, I'm not really comfortable teaching you anymore. So uh, that's about a... Another, what, 1,000, 1,500 SR away. So as long as you're in that range, this will apply to you as well. Let's get it. Let's see it. One. <coughs> I'm already kind of impressed. The only thing is, I don't like, is, uh, well, how do I put this? You'll see what I mean really quick. Do you see it now? Most good on us will play this corner or back here. You're out in the middle of the open. Small thing, but supports especially need to be very careful of their positioning because if you get in trouble, you get in trouble fast, especially when you're going for an anti. I'm surprised a silver player knows that arc on that. Good job. Like I said, can get in trouble real quick. A lot of discipline not nating yourself there. Do you have ping issues or frame drop issues? I'm looking at your um your aim. It's very um jittery. You even looked at the ground? I'm impressed. I am actually genuinely f impressed. Oh, f and death. Okay. So what did you do wrong here? Let's talk about it. This is actually kind of impressive. To be honest with you, I probably would have tried to take another shot at him right here, but if your team's low, that's fine. The 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 biggest thing for me is I never see Anna's good Anna's push through this choke until it's like really safe. You don't really follow your team in. And I know you're looking at the Kree behind you, but he's already used his flash. I wouldn't be that scared of him as long as you're playing right here this area because if you play right here this like this literal spot one of two things happens one you keep healing forward two you can just turn to your left and literally see him do you get what i mean this is one of those examples of using the map to your advantage and positional advantage because it's not something you think about right away but it's a safe spot you're below high ground, so nothing's really going to sneak up on you that easily. And you can keep an eye on this guy who's a problem. Now, you know, in a perfect world, you force him out and take some shots on him because your mercy's right there. What What is it? Three or four honor shots to kill Kree? You, you put two in him, he's running. You know? But... Pushed in too far. Kind of stepped into a trap, and so that's got its own problem, but... To be honest with you, I don't think you should be pushing in like that anyways. So, you kind of end up getting f No fucking way. Thank you, Angela. That's unbelievable. So, this is actually one of those times I follow them in. Okay. You're, they just crushed him. Good sleep, by the way. Some things I'm going to be a little bit more lenient on you for, just because um, I can tell it's high ping. But why not go for the shots there? Why not? Do you get scared because of Zarya? She's low charge. 
Like a second you see the Zarya, you go, nope. I'm not a big fan of this. Why are you giving up? Secure the kills. Work with your team. Why not help them? Why are you going back to be a cart bot? Cart's not even ready to move yet. I promise you. I promise you. No matter what role you play, what rank you play at, there's three people right here. It is 900 times out of 900 more effective to just go kill them and go back for cart because then they have the five second respawn timer and then the 10 second walk back as opposed to getting an extra two seconds on the cart. Nim. You have my thanks. Like, like, all, like their run kind of f***s up there and your Zarya saves your run with a bubble, but things just kind of almost went south really quick. And now you don't get the kills, you know? Now, getting kills isn't exactly your job, but you have an anti, you have, you just slept them. Ana does do decent damage. And on top of that, you can enable your team to be, feel safer and feel safer to attack. And plus you would have been healing, so you would have had nano. So you could have nanoed your Ryan back over there, Ryan. Okay, so now you're looking for the tire. This is actually really good. Unfortunately, you miss. Ping maybe had something to do with it, but either way though, that was good heads up, such an relational awareness. The problem was <coughs> you kind of lost that fight by by leaving it. You, you lost your advantage. Remember what we were talking about before? Hello there. You're you're watching this video. What I'm referencing is the video before this one. The one where we did a Rhine. Now, even if you don't play Rhine, if you play any tank, you probably should watch it. Actually, if you play anything, you probably should watch it because it'll probably be helpful to you. But so what I'm referencing there is the small amounts of time that Overwatch is. Overwatch is like football. It's a game of inches. Every time you don't capitalize on something, every time you don't take space fast enough, every time that you don't have confidence and you fail to, to, to act on that confidence, you give them an opportunity to punish you. You're not being aggressive. You're not being alpha. You're not making good plays. You're letting opportunities slip through your fingers do not do that be confident capitalize play aggressive your accuracy is very very good for a silver player on 160 ping they want to start being more critical of your mechanics now by the way why are you leaving that Kree back there why are you leaving that Kree back there? Why did you not even look at him? Why are you afraid? Why do you not even look at him? Your team's getting a grab barrage. They don't need you. You already nailed someone. I would have seen those two shots, and I would have just immediately started to look for this Kree. Now, that doesn't mean stick your head in the middle of the opening there. Hello? Oh, because Marty in it. I wouldn't mean stand right here and look for him, but like the second you crossed over here, I would have started like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? And look at what his HP was. He's pretty low. I might have been able to kill him. Listen to me. If you watch ML7, if you watch CarQ, if you watch any high level players, especially support players, they are deadly f They're not heal bots. They go on the aggressive a lot. They will take the duel and not be afraid because they know they can win it. Confidence, being aggressive, realizing you're more than just a heal bot. I have your back. Now you did look for him in the end, but it was too late. You lost your opportunity. You Looking for opportunities as they go. Just a missed shot there, unlucky. See, now imagine a fight got to happen there. You would have spent all that time looking for him. You could have killed him the whole time with one shot. Now, if that guy was smart, he would have grabbed the Mega and the Mini and stuff like that, and, you know? So you're not gonna get that kind of an easy sh easy kill that often, but again, timings, being aggressive, punishing their mistakes, creating your own opportunities. So, here's what I don't like about this, is you're seeing you're taking a fight, 
I know you go for the anti nade off the wall, which I'm okay with. I'm okay with that. My problem is this rotation. You like rotate around to, to hop on the cart to get another angle. Like why, why do you do this? Why do you do that? You kind of just get your tanks killed. Okay. This corner, hold on. This corner right here is perfectly fine. By the way, if you don't know this, if you're playing Ana Mercy, Ana is mostly dedicated to healing tanks. Mercy is mostly dedicated to healing support. I mean, uh, DPS and so like, don't be like looking around that much, especially in early fight. Later on in the fight, you might need to, but in early fight, I wouldn't be too too concerned. But this rotation, you, you do when you could just play this corner, just just play this, and then the cart moves out. The cart's gonna move out here. Just you can walk with the cart, play the front of the cart. But instead, you go for this weird like flank rotation to like get on the back of the cart for some reason. Remember what we were talking about in the last video? Hello again. Where if there was a porcelain throne on the front of the of that cart. Our team, the Rhine we watched, would it be sitting on it at all times because he never left the cart? Well, in your case here, if there was a porcelain thrown on the back of fucking the cart, you'd be sitting there taking a shit. So your Rhine ends up dying because of that rotation. Small, but it gets him killed because then you break your LOS when you're trying to be aggressive here, which being aggressive is good. I this is actually fire. good. I enjoy this. <laughs> oh, skip alerts. Okay. Alerts are muted now for the rest of this. Cool. Um, you are, going aggressive here is fine, but what the problem is is you never got to check your Ryan's health because of that weird little rotation you did. That weird little rotation kind of fucked it. So by the time you realized, it was too late. Um... Look where you ended up is the same place. Yeah, it's it's, it's no different. The, like your location hasn't changed. It's just it's kind of a pointless rotation, you know. Also, I understand your body blocking for your mercy. Careful with that though. You are not. You are very expendable. Not a big fan of that nade. The sh shots are fine. Nade. Mm. You see, there's Zarya was about to use self bubble. There's Zarya self bubbled herself right in front of you, and I guarantee there's Zarya plays somewhat aggressive. You can you can anti her when she plays aggressive instead of. Well, your Ryan died again. I don't know if you could have actually helped that at all. I think you're kind of just dead. To be honest with you, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think, and maybe I'm wrong for this, and I could be wrong for this. I think I would have positioned myself more this way in the original spot when you get the res off and then watch this and then once you took this angle and saw what was happening so you got to see which is key you got to see what was happening around this corner when you backed off I would have rotated into this hallway so that you can heal your tanks from a better angle does that make sense so thinking about positional awareness Remember the conversation we just had on 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 Eichenwall. I mean, not Eichenwall on on G uh, Gibraltar. A big part of it is how these corner angles work. So if they take this corner from you, you your backline DPS and supports can't see their backline, right? But their backline can see your front line and a little bit in very easily. So in this case, with a little rotation, you would be able to see their backline. They either be able to see you. But you'd also it'd be a fair fight <laughs> instead of a one-sided fight. Does that make sense? Um yeah. You're also hiding from this high noon. I mean you could have hit from the high noon in the right side room too. I still don't think even if you went to the right, you could have saved your Ryan. I think he's still dead. I think he just fed his brains out. But it would have been a like a, a better positional advantage for the next time you might have had a better chance. And, and when I say like, when I say something like that, where I'm like, you probably should have done this and you're sitting there and you're like, but you would have lost that fight regardless. That doesn't make the point throughout the f window. It still matters. Like you still should have been there. It just wouldn't have outcome that fight. But the next one where maybe it does, you're in position on time. Just because your positioning didn't matter on that fight doesn't mean it won't matter on the next.
also when I say that, I don't mean like for the person I'm watching. I mean for you at home watching. Because I understand that probably the person who's watching this right now isn't thinking that. There's definitely a lot of people that do have that mentality. So here's the big one. Here's the big one. I know you're a support, so it's not totally your judgment call to make. But if there's comms, you should not be going this way. You should be going high ground. The reason you want to go high ground is because, one, you forced any of their high ground off. Their soldier, this is going to be a menace and you're not gonna be able to do anything about it too when if you're up there as Anna you now have this pillar to hide you have both of these you have this wall you have the ground itself you have plenty of ways to escape you have a mini if you go all the way back I guess you have a mega too you have a lot of resources by trying to take high ground here you're gonna end up trying to follow your team in and play with the and follow the curve <coughs> but I want you to notice right here right now that support positional awareness is much more punished than tank because tanks you can kind of get away with in low ranks because you just exist but this is where you should be right here where do you end up wait for it wait for it you do the loop de loop and pull and then you go all the way around so you take half damage for nothing now that's a better player. He hits their shots, or someone else gets a lucky right click on you from their Zarya, might be dead. You take and you take a lot of damage there for very little reason. Now your team gets shattered. Again, though, there's not much you're doing about that. But be working on your own play. Good attempt. I like that actually. That was actually very stylish. That was very stylish. That was a great escape. Do you see where the positional awareness comes into a play, though? You almost got punished for it. You almost got punished for it. Here it comes. Watch chat. Watch chat. First off, you almost got punished there. No Cree. And then, here it is. Ready? Why come out here? What's the difference? Can you not heal from right here? Can you not heal the mercy from up close? Look, watch your health pool. Watch your health pool. Just a couple more shots and a helix rocket. That's good night. Little things. Little things. Careful. Just because you're playing against people that don't know how to shoot now means that when you play a smurf. Ah, smurf. -a! That was something, guys. When you play against someone who's better than you and better than that rank, they will punish that mistake. So fix it now. Okay, okay, hey, hey. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Big, 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 big flank, big flank. Here comes the anti. Not really sure. <laughs> it's not CSGO. Don't need to clear it like that. Now, this needs to be made fast. Uh-oh. Yeah, you're dead. Okay, so let's go this through this again. Little time taken here is very crucial because you're not healing your team. So they're gonna die faster. So taking taking the time here is a little bit of a mistake. You realize people are low. Your Ryan's somehow low, even though he's safe. You throw the anti, which was the plan the whole time. And then hit a good sleep. Great sleep. That almost went south real fucking quick, though. Do you understand? If you don't make the mechanical play there of hitting the sleep dart, it's good night, right? Now, here's an alternate take. Here's an alternate take. You still hit the sleep dart, but you are a little quicker on the clearing the high ground and a little quicker on the draw. And you get the good anti on the Rhine and the Zarya, or kill the Zen. This will only hurt. Alternate universe, you get an extra shot on them. Alternate universe, possibility. Alternate universe. Now, it's still a great positional play. Great play to kill, to sleep the soldier. That's on, oh God. 
that's honestly just that's just good mechanical play right there good job but do you see where a small small little thing where it's clearing the high ground like that almost ends in death almost ends in death oh ryan what you doing baby what you doing okay i'm gonna be honest i feel like you're lost and now i'm lost because of it so you get in trouble up top so okay i look at this situation and i go shit's going south quick the second i hear this for the crusaders i probably nano your ride immediately just because i i want to give him the benefit of the doubt that he will hit he hit the shatter right this is kind of your Ryan is a feeder. Your, your Ryan is the feeding Freddy from last game, right? He's a feeding Freddy from last game. So honestly, the second I hear that, I think you give him the benefit of the doubt and just fucking go for it, right? I can't really blame you for being too lost in this, but that's the one thing I, I if when shit goes wrong, just try to make some type of play, to be honest with you. That's the best thing you can do. Because I feel like before this play is even over, it's felt over because you're going to drop and you're just going to look around and not know what to do. So instead of like when shit hits the fan, trying to make the best out of it, it's, uh oh, went wrong. I don't know what to do. I froze. Him. So now we know another hog, but now we're down three. It's one of those situations, and it's not good. It's not good, because you end up nanoing anyways. It's one of those situations when, when shit really f goes wrong. And if you've ever noticed, you ever heard of, if you have never heard of the East Coast Special, the East Coast Special is like six people are playing, two are in voice. You got a Sim one trick, a Torb one trick, uh, a, a, a Mercy one trick, a, a Hog and a Ball one trick, and everyone just doing the clown circus but together you have no idea what's happening right you're that one dude who actually fills the 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 other DP, the other DP support player who doesn't know what's going on that actually filled but when the clown fiesta's popping the way you win the clown fiesta is you just go frag because if you don't know what's going on their pro their team probably laughing at your team and not knowing what's going on either right so if they don't know what's going on either, that's actually a great opportunity to just try to make a play. That's that's a lot to bring him back earlier. The confidence thing, the um, just making plays, being a good player, being proactive and and not sitting there and trying to think like, okay, what do I do? 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 You just go for it. If you're wrong, you are wrong. But at least that way, if you're wrong, you'll learn. And the next time, when you end up being right, you made the decision fast. Again, you love, 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 love going way out in the open. Also, are you reading that rhyme like a literal textbook? By the way, your Ryan is awful. I'm just gonna say it. I'm sorry. Ryan is awful. I hope that's not Triforce. To be honest with you, you lost this fight a long time ago. A long time ago. A long, long time ago. You wanna know when you lost this fight? Right here. Wait for it. You lost your fight right there. You just lost. But you're trying to catch up on heals. Kind of didn't notice the ride fast enough, so he couldn't go back in. Your comp is just dog shit. Like, listen, listen, listen. Like, 
to be honest with you, you're playing perfect, quote unquote, Overwatch, right? You're playing perfect, quote unquote, Overwatch. You're sitting behind the tanks. You're healing the tanks. You're doing some offense. You're doing some defense. You're hitting your sleep darts. You're hitting your... This game ain't going to work that way. They have Ryan Zarya, Zen on defense, Ana's pocketing their tanks, their soldier, and McCree are dumping on your weird sim. I didn't even know you had a junk. I haven't even seen them comp. Okay. You will not win this game like this. It will not happen. The way you win a dog game like this is you notice their Ryan has just got bubbled. Their Zarya just used self bubble. And then you huck a nade right in between and get him purpled when your Ryan goes aggressive. It has to be the most perfect, like thinking ahead, looking for cooldowns, not just trying to like just throw it off the wall because I've seen ML7 do it. The way you win this game is you have to slow down and go, okay, traditional pocket the tanks, pocket the sports ain't going to win. Being a heal bot ain't going to win here. I'm trying to do some DPS stuff, but to be honest with you, I'm not seeing opportunities, which to be true, you haven't seen many opportunities. The way you win this is a big anti on their front line. That's how you win this game right now. Their Zarya is bubbling on cooldown. Their Rhine. You have to catch her. You have to catch her. That's your key to victory right now. You have to catch her. Because you're hitting your sleep darts. You're hitting your nades on not the right things. You're hitting them on the walls like you wanted to. You know, like they're, they're good, smart plays, but it won't win you this game. Because this is one of those East Coast specials that you're going to have to think outside the box. Remember what the last one we said that playing Ryan on, on Gibraltar, you're never going to work because it's a 3D map. And then the way they played was very 2D. Both sides played very 2D, right? This is an example that you actually got to go beyond 3D and think for like 4D and be like, okay, even if I go high ground here, it ain't going to work. You have to look for some play and some moment. And make the decision that that's what you're going for. Okay, so you're trying, your team's trying high ground again. Just, just go for the nano on him. Just nano his dumb ass. Just nano him. Just nano him. Just trust. There's the anti. A little slow though on the, on the, on the, you know, because then the anti's worn off by now, you know? He had time to build another one. Hey, luckily, hey, it worked out. He got an extra swing or two. It worked out. Should have nanned him a long time ago. But hey, that's what you needed. It's not over, though. It's not over, though. You are frontlining on Ana against the... Mm. Oh, boy. This was the break you needed right here. Boom. That's the break. The second I see my Rhine and my Hog being absolute beta bitches, I'm not, you don't run their spawn. You don't run their spawn. You don't run the gauntlet. Especially, you you literally just watched your Mercy get rolled in front of your eyes. And you go for the, the anti and then the sleep. You've been hitting so many mechanical plays that you are relying on your mechanical plays. Your mechanical plays should be consistent, should be easy, and can bail you out if you fuck up. If you're only relying on them, though, it's not going to make you a good player. Remember what we talked about when we were playing console? Remember when I said all the mouse and keyboard players who play mouse and keyboard on console are dog shit? This is what I mean. They're dog shit because they're fucking, they're, they're, their game sense are awful, but they mechanically can just beat... The controller players because it's not even close what you're doing here is mechanically you're pretty good even on 150 ping you're you're trying to use your mechanics to compensate and make plays when in reality there the play was already made with the nano with the, the, the extra heal on your rhine and you just have to live and then if their a soldier rushes you then use your mechanical prowess to go out to maybe take him down but the rush to him throws the rest of this fight your mercy does it too, but this fight's over now. You won't. There's no way you can.
Oh shit. Unless your Ryan's a chat all of a sudden. Did your Ryan just become a chat overnight? No way. Your Ryan might have just became a chat. No. No. No, nope, still feeding Freddy. Maybe you'll get the boot. I'm surprised they didn't kill your tanks. To be honest, they performed better without the heals than with it. Good heads up read. Going for the Ana. Heads up read. Great heads up read. Boom. Oh, Charlie Niner, Charlie Niner. Winnable. 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 Killing that Ana right there actually gave you a huge opportunity. Because you slowly choked them off. You know what? That was one of those times that you used your mechanical prowess right there to your advantage. You went and took the 1v1 duel, and that was a great play. Good f***ing job. Good f***ing job. That was top tier. That was You identified the threat. You went and acquired. Target acquired. Fox 2 killed the threat. How did he take so much damage so fast? Okay. My big problem here, my big, 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 big problem is you threw an, an aggressive nade, which is fine. But you're, you're standing in the middle of the ledge with no shield, scoped, shooting targets when they've had a McCree the whole game. If that McCree is better, he's bopping your ass. He is bopping your ass. There is no way you should sit this long, completely scoped in, just stopping to reload in the middle of the main high ground. This is just bad awareness on their team. I'll be honest. This is just bad awareness on their team. That's not something that should be rewarded. Again, this is, what, 1,800 silver? You exploit it? Well, that's the thing, though, is you exploit it, but then those times are going to happen where you're not no longer exploiting it, and you're not going to know how to... How to Stop, not die and realize, okay, can't get away with that and then change your play style. You're going to like, let's say, like, let's say you abuse something in, in say, gold and you, you're good at abusing it, but you can't climb. Either something else is extremely against you or maybe that thing isn't as good as you think. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of what I'm getting at. Your team's also kind of a bunch of feeding Freddy's right now. This is also why people play BAP right now, because BAP is just better. Because you can just heal your whole team instead of Ana, who fucking has to heal one target. So to be honest with you, just, you know, the, the Ana picks are already tough. I would not be scoped shooting. I would not be scoped scope shooting your junk rat. Well, I mean, you're dead here. <laughs> You're already dead. Just kill him, dude. There's no fucking okay. Because their Cree, their Cree sucks balls. You should be dead. You should have been. You should have been dead when you were scope shooting. You should have been dead when you went and looked at their Ryan and gave him a little well high five. You should be dead. I mean, now you are, but you get what I mean. The problem too, the problem that sucks is the way your team played that and you played that gave up the whole first point. I mean, there's not much I guess you can do about that, but I mean, if you're in comms, you want to hold this choke where they're at right now. And in, in running full speed, like the Kree should just one shot you right there. You should be dead, you know? And like you're resetting right now, you're resetting 
And if you get into trouble, you have no cooldowns. Like, you just throw all of them aggressively. Like, I think that's one of those times that you don't throw them aggressively there. Like, I think you're dead either way, but when you're on a reset, it's much more get out, get safe, go back, instead of like, I'm trying to do damage on the way out because that's how you die. I'm not that's not a good reset. You know, it happens all the time actually in GM games when people are like, okay, get out or die, get out or die. And then they're almost out and they're shooting on the way out and then they die. And it's like, okay, well now, you know, that's a huge stagger. You know, that's kind of like what that is. Don't forget, Ana is not the best healer right now. What makes Ana strong is her nano, her sleep dart, and her nade. Remember that. The, ceiling, the healing is supplemental. Don't forget, the best healing comp right now in GM is Zen Brig. Why do you think that is? Because raw healing don't mean shit. It's all about the utility. It's all about the ability to stay alive. Good shot on it. Best you could have done. Good sleep. Good comms. It's a, it's a anti him. A little bit in no man's land right now. A little bit lost. Um, don't forget, your job is to heal the tanks. Your job is to heal the tanks. Your mercy's job is to heal the DPS. When your tanks are in deep like that, don't leave them hanging. You think Bat Brig would be just as effective as Brig Zen? No. Bat is used in a different situation. Good frag. Beautiful. 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 You're going to live. You're going to be okay. Okay, make a decision here. What are you looking for? Make a decision here. You're not doing anything. I know you're looking for Junkrat, but you can do two things at once. I believe in you. What are you doing? You're, you're, you are, you are, you're freezing right now. This will help. Get back in the fight. Not good. Not good. Mechanically very good, uh, but I can tell you, you can definitely get lost in the sauce. <sighs> Beginning of the fight, just hucked your nade and, and threw your sleep dart out. Not great. Not great. Got no value out of either of them. That Winston jumps you, you're probably dead. Yo, Nano. Nano, your sim. Nano, your sim. Nano, your sim. Okay, your sim's dead. So your sim is up close with level 2 beam. You nano, your sim. But you're holding it. Now it's up to whether or not you get a tire. Wait, no. That was their tire. No, you, you lose that fight. Why? 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 Not only not, not only was he nano, but like even if he wasn't nano. Like, you just rezzed your sim. Why not just help your sim do this? Why do you, 
Well, you just made yourself an extra casualty. I can tell you're very lost right now. You did pretty good on attack, but once things aren't traditional anymore, you lose it. This is a lot of about confidence. It's a lot about just making a decision. It's a lot about trying some new things. The cooldown usage needs improvement clearly. Like I understand what you're going for and it's like good attempts, but like you're constantly leaving yourself like open. It's just, we haven't been punished for it yet, you know? And that was just a very weird jump into the team. Like, and, and, and you win that fight, but I would argue not really any in part to you. Sleep dart, by the way, across the map. Let's say you hit that sleep dart, then what? You think your whole team's gonna be the killer? Is a best case scenario even worth it? Decent lead. Oh, there it is. Unlucky. That's why you typically start the fight with something like Nano. So you can start the initiation. Do they even have Shatter at the start of the fight? They probably did. They probably did. They did. But at least you start to have pressure. Instead of, trying, instead of trying to have it to flip the fight, you know? So instead of like the fight you're losing, then you try to flip back and then they, they finish you, you start on the aggression, so then they ult to, to push you back. You get what I mean? Like, I would have nanoed somebody way sooner. Very, how do I put it? You're, you're proactive on your, on your cooldowns, almost to a fault. You're reactive on your nanos. Dangerous, but I liked it. You're not gonna be able to touch again. Oh, oh, sh oh, you're going for it. No, no, leave. Run, 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 run. You already did your job. You did your job, sir. Leave. Run. Run away. Why are you still here? What are you doing? Still here? Run away. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. This was, this was so. Dude, listen. You just took your balls and just like onto the table, right? And made this crazy heads up play. Crazy heads up play to touch. And buy time for your team to make it. This was big. Why are you not back over here the second they get here? Why are you hunting this Rhine? Did this Rhine like, did he like make fun of your mom like mid game or some shit? What is your problem? Why are you trying to kill him so bad? Like what's the issue? You did your job already. It's time to back up and help. Instead, you get pushed into the Rhine and he f your ass. I'll rest when the fighting is done. My biggest problem right now is your your pathing out of spawn. Why are you going main? <coughs> Why are you not going high ground right out of spawn? Why not? Yeah, there's people up there. I mean, we see that now, but you should be going up there regardless. You're, you can force them out just like you did now. You force them out on your own, you could have done that on high ground. Giving you high ground gives you control of not only this whole area. Okay, you have some TP. Okay. But still, it's still important because now you're going to see what you have and you understand that this is high ground is better. But don't wait for your sim to TP you because you ain't always going to have a sim and you ain't always going to have, you know, a sim that's going to take you there. Again, 
Why are you here? What the f are you doing? Did your controller turn off? Are you are you playing on a controller and it turned off? Did your batteries die? It's like holy sh I hit this crazy sleep. Let me stare at it now. You get distracted? You got distracted to fall on the low ground? So you got distracted to jump down here and sleep him. Uh. Is that Vaughn review not a roast session? The only one ro roasting is me. Because he's made the same mistake over and over and over where they're dropping to low ground. There's no need. Whether you hit the sleep or not isn't the issue. This is actually one of those cases where it was best case scenario for you. You slept the Reaper, you hit the sleep, but you're in terrible positioning now and you die. I'm concerned now that they're going to flip this fight. Mm -hmm. You stay up top. There's no reason to be down here. Like you're hitting all your abilities. It's just... Like, it's like you rely too much on mechanical. Like, even after you get res, do you see in such a bad position you are now? You're stuck at the front line, and their Ana goes and frags you. So if you were up top, you wouldn't you wouldn't be getting threatened by any of this. Because look what they have. They have a Moira, Ana, Ryan, Zarya, Reaper, Junk. Junk could come get you, Ana could shoot at you, Moira, I guess, could throw an orb, and you could get beamed from Zarya, but that's very unlikely. The problem is where you are. The problem is, you know, we've beat into him a million times and we had the MS Paint. Actually, you want to put the MS Paint thing into this video too? So it's twice, so people understand what I'm talking about. We'll do the MS Paint thing. That'd be great. Here's this chat. If you, let's say, are here. And someone else is here. Okay. If you're looking at them, right? You're looking at them. How does this person break LOS from you? From you here? Well, if there's a wall here, they can go behind the wall. That's it. If the wall doesn't exist and you back up, until you back up to the curvature of the earth, they'll be able to still see you. Correct? You have to go behind some type of object. However, the way high ground works, is if they can see you up here, think about what this LOS is. You back up a certain distance. You are now over here. You have broken their LOS. They don't have x-ray vision. They can't see through the ground. The ground becomes an extra ability to break LOS and use cover. So if you have a wall up here as well, you have two ways to break their LOS instead of one. So not only do you gather information better, you have better cover because the ground itself becomes cover. Number three is because of the better information gathering, it's actually the same type of effect this way. So let's say you're here. This is you. This is your Ryan in front of you. And he's got his, his big rectangle up, right? And then there's someone on high ground, okay? Someone's on high ground. The further this guy right here moves this way, the more underneath he becomes. So let's see how it looks in action. I don't know how to, is there a bigger eraser? Let's make a new one again. Um, 
Fuck, what was the tool I was using? Was it this one? Nope. Was this one? Nope. I'm on fire! Oh, it was this one. No? So it was, okay. If they're up here on the high ground, and the shield goes here, now he's through eyes now. Shield goes here. Okay. He's still protect protected because he can tilt it this way, right? He can tilt it this way. He can tilt it. And this part obviously moves, right? What about you back here? Unless you're directly underneath, you become exposed. So you'd have to really be under their ass. Which doesn't happen that often. So this guy up top, even though you're looking at behind the Rhine, and this guy is eating some glue, and is like, but I'm shielding. The angle doesn't exist, because once he goes a certain distance forward, they can see over it and see you. Now, if they were down here, on the low ground, low ground Larry, and that shield is still up, you can never see through it because it still exists. So you have better information, you have a better LOS, and you have better cover. Does that make sense? Thanks, buddy. Um, it's a great example of, 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 of using high ground. Because even in the best case scenario where you're hitting all your abilities, which which is fantastic, not not every player can do that. Not every player can hit all those abilities like that. It's it, it just shows you're skillful. Um, it actually ends up being one of your biggest weaknesses. But you're relying on it. I'm curious to see how you'll do on Zen, because mechanically you do very well. So far, a little bit less than I would have expected. I don't think you're paying attention. You're not paying attention. You're just holding down left mouse click. Like, like, let's, let's, you know, let's be analytical for a second, okay? Let's half speed all of your shots. Two. Three, four, good, five, good, six, good. And this is where we start to fall off. Into the air, into the ground, into the bottom. Another good one, another good one, another good one, another good one. I see the attempt. All right, ammo, reload. Good, 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 good. Even though it's a miss, good. Like, what are we, what are we going for at this point? Like, we're not paying attention. There's nobody even there. You know, there's like four or five, six shots, four or five, six shots in a row that aren't on anything, you know, and it's like <laughs> the reason that matters on Zen is because reloading affects your ability to, um, to, to swap discord, swap harmony, stuff like that. It slows down your ability to do other things. So if you're stuck reloading half the time because you're shooting at nothing, you're not really shooting. You're just, do you get what I'm saying? Your head's gotta still be in the game. No dying on my watch. Oof. Lucky. Okay. Let's see defense. Ooh, Baptiste. Okay. Oh shit. Close. Attackers incoming. Okay. Decent positioning. Decent. The reason I said decent is because. That window actually makes it so there's not much variability. Because if you're on the platform, not this one, the other one. If you're on the other platform, you can move very far both sides. That's the best place to be. That's probably second best. Where you're going right now is the worst. Because see what this is? You have LOS of their whole team. But your team doesn't. So they're playing this corner. So you have to heal these people and damage these people and not get killed from these people all at the same time with no cover. 
this is going to hurt. I think you're starting to realize it, though. You realize it, though, and back off, which is good because it was getting to the point that you were going to get punished. Now, the higher you go, chat, <clears throat> we talked about this before. The reason good players are good players is because they make the decisions immediately, right? They make the decisions immediately as fast as possible, mechanically are, 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 are well-trained, and they act fast, right? Vash makes the right decision that goes, okay, that isn't the good place to be. I'm out and backs off. But how long did it take, realistically? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So about eight to nine seconds to go, uh oh, that's a bad place to be, right? Now, on the reverse side, on their side, it might be eight to nine seconds before they decide, oh shit, that BAP up top's a free kill. What if that's a, let's say, diamond player who's smurfing, okay? So say they're smurfing. They've already realized you're in a bad shot, bad spot, and they're gonna try to kill you because it takes longer for you to realize that that was a mistake. That's why those smurfs dominate you. That's why they beat you. That's why it sucks to play against because they punish those mistakes because it's taking you longer to figure them out. Uh, I'm a little questionable on that lamp. A little questionable. You have to ult immediately the second you get it. Like, just, just drop it. Ah, oh, you didn't get it, you monkey. So, let's talk about what happens here. Let's talk about it. I understand what's happening, but right at this moment, right... Boom. Right there, you panic. You ready? Watch the panic. You get up close to use your, your self-heal on your teammates. You know your self-heal only does like 50 heals overall to your teammates? It's like 15 a second. It's like 15 heals a second. It doesn't do anything. It heals you. So it heals you really well. It does... I forget what it heals you. But it heals you very well. But it doesn't heal your teammates for shit. So you're so scared it's 75 for teammates 150 for bap okay so you're scared you, you panic because you already used your 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 lamp you panic and try to get as much heals into your team as possible because you know you made a mistake with the lamp so you try to compensate by making sure they do not die well my friend that was a mistake because realistically you have the ult to change this fight. BAP window is the, one of the fastest charging ults in the game. And the way those teams are playing it, you got this. How should you have played this? Even if you make this mistake of dropping, you needed to get back under that bridge ASAP. But again, you're, you're very hard focused on healing at this point. And the rhyme pin did boop you, which kind of sucked ass. So, let's talk about that. The big mistake is dropping, okay? But even if you went for this, this drop, the second you hit this, you should be going left. You get booped, but you're going to the right anyways. That's why you get booped to the right. It follows your momentum. So you were moving to the right, you get booped to the right. If you're going to the left, you get booped to the left. Do you get what I mean? So I know that you were moving to the right anyways. Because you weren't on the, like... The, the the Ryan does boop to whatever side you're going to, but there's added momentum and the the how how far away you went is because you were moving in that direction, which means that you were trying to move this way anyway. So yes, you get booped, but regardless, so even if you didn't get booped in some world, you would have moved to the right more and you would have probably died anyways. Ninety nine to the ults you need. Ninety nine to the ult you need. And the worst part is, you panic jump because you're trying to stay alive. It's all panic. You panic jump, trying to stay alive, when if you just kept walking, fired one more shot, dropped the window and died, that would have been a better play. And dying at 99 for the whole team. So what did we learn? So what did we learn there? 
The panic comes from not having confidence in what you're going to do. The panic comes from this overwhelming desire of, I don't want to fuck up. And if you do fuck up, you try to overcompensate to do better. If you're confident that you constantly have been making the right decisions, and don't get me wrong, I make I make mistakes all the time. I reflect on them more after, or after the fight. But in the fight, I always try to say, okay, I made the right decision. I'm going to make the right decision here. Because if you sit there and you think about it, you won't make the right decision. Because even if you do make the right decision, it'll be too late and no longer a right decision. And that's just how it works, baby. That's just how it is.